About a month ago, Johnny Styroller hosted the Huawei Game Jam. The goal of this jam was to make a game in three and a half days. And since I've never participated in a game jam, my stupid brain decided to join. So this is the story of how I made this game for the game jam. Before the jam started, I made a project and put the necessary files in it. That means I don't have to rewrite the sprite manager, the map manager, collision checking, etc. I took everything from a platformer project by the way. Now to make sure everything is working, I drew this dude. Then I added controls to him. And look at that, it's working. The preparation is finished and we're now ready for the theme reveal. And the theme is… Collaborate with AI. Wow, thanks Jonas. After the theme was revealed, I couldn't come up with an idea for a game. At first I wanted to make a platformer where you control both the player and his helpful robot, but I later figured that I can't do it in 3 days. So I come up with something simple. There's gonna be a robot who will wander around, and the goal of the game is to protect him from the enemies who'll try to destroy him by shooting at them. Day number 1. I started this day by drawing the player. I made him angry because I was planning on adding a story to the game. More on that later. Since we're gonna shoot with the mouse, I made the player face the mouse all the time with this code. We're just flipping the sprite when the mouse is on the left of the player. And as it always happens, it doesn't work. But at least we can walk. Or even moonwalk. I realized that we need to get the mouse position relative to the window and not the screen. We also need to take into account that we're resizing the screen. Let's see. Yes. Next I fixed the moonwalking bug with this code. And before you say it, I purposely wrote terrible code because I was in a hurry. My main goal was to make it work. I also added acceleration to make it seem more natural. It's time we add a map. Well I wouldn't call it a map since we're just putting walls at the border. Anyway, I was planning on making the game isometric so I drew this wall. And to make sure the collision works correctly, here's the player's hitbox. Left collision. Works. Right collision. Works. Top collision. Works. Bottom collision. Works. Ok, we're gonna draw the bottom wall separately so I added this argument to the map's draw function. And that's everything I did on day 1. Day number 2. On the next day I decided to hide the cursor. And replace it with this amazing crosshair that I drew. And now our cursor looks like this. Wow, it looks so cool. You wanna see something even cooler? Oh my god! For those of you who are interested, I just added a timer for that. I think we're ready to add a robot to our game. And here it is. The robot will randomly choose a target position and go there. Once it's there, it'll wait for a couple of seconds and choose the next position and so on. Now this may sound easy to you, but for me who wrote the entire robot class from scratch, this is not the case. And after all that, we have a working robot. Right? Right? Of course not, for some reason this stupid thing wants to go beyond the map. After thinking about this, I realized that I was setting the randomness distribution before loading the map. So the robot couldn't choose a random position on an empty map. I also made the robot look at the target while moving. Alright, now we need to add a game over condition. For that, the robot needs to have a health variable. Since we don't have any enemies, I made the robot lose its health when I press K. Once its health reaches zero, we'll switch its state to this. Now when it comes to drawing the health bar, we're gonna divide the robot's current health by its max health to get the percentage of its health. Then we can use that percentage to draw the portion of the health bar texture. Ok, it's time for testing. It works. I also made the player look at the destroyed robot like, Oh, not this again. Why am I even protecting this robot? What did I do to deserve this? I can't even escape this place. I'm pretty sure he's fine. By the way, did you guys know that this video was sponsored by Brilliant? I mean, it's a great place if you want to learn science, math, and computer science with interactive lessons. There are over thousands of lessons on Brilliant that'll help you learn topics ranging from mathematical fundamentals all the way to neural networks. And Brilliant is also an amazing alternative to college so you don't have to spend many years or a great fortune to learn STEM. Even if you spend like 20 minutes on Brilliant every day, this can make a huge impact on your knowledge about these topics and improve your future. And one of the things I like about Brilliant is that they don't just give you the solution but also explain everything step by step so that you can become a good problem solver. Millions of people already chose Brilliant as a way to learn complex topics easily. So what are you waiting for? Head over to Brilliant.org using the link in the description to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. 
The first 200 people to sign up using that link will also get 20% off Berlin's annual premium subscription. Day number 3. We don't have too much left, so we need to actually finish the game. And we haven't even added our first enemy, so let's do that. The enemy will be generated outside of the screen, and it's gonna move towards the robot, but not like a robot. Instead it's gonna accelerate in the direction of the robot. That'll make it more unpredictable. When the enemy hits the robot, it'll damage it and get destroyed. The enemy class has health, a hit timer, and a face frame, just like the robot. To generate the enemy, we're randomly picking a side on the screen. Then we're generating the enemy at a random position on that side. And here we're accelerating the enemy towards the robot. The enemy will also have a tail. We just memorize the previous positions of the enemy and use them to draw the tail. For now they don't do any damage to the robot. And that leads to this. This looks beautiful. Okay, here's the damaging curve. Our enemy started moving, he's about to hit the robot, and what a mess! He missed again, and again, and oh, finally. They also do this when they destroy the robot. Now we need to add shooting to kill them. Here's the player's gun, and its bullets. I made a separate class for the bullets. To calculate the direction of the gun and the bullets, I'm calculating the arc tangent of the difference between the player's position and the mouse position. Now when it comes to drawing the gun, we're gonna do the same thing we did in the ray casting video. First we're gonna divide 360 degrees by the total number of barrel frames. Let's say it's 8 frames for simplicity. So each frame will represent 45 degrees. Then we're gonna shift the angle by 22.5 degrees so that the bisector of the angles matches the frames. Let's see. Oh yeah. Now let's make them damage the enemies. Here we go. Yes. I also added a knockback when you shoot. Then I didn't like the fact that bullets are going exactly where I want them to. So I made them scatter randomly. This looks way better now. Now that the game is finished, we can focus on other things. First I decided to add a scoreboard. The scoreboard can show up to 4 digits. I don't think people can score more than 10,000 points. And please don't take this as a challenge. Every time the player kills an enemy, we'll increase the score by 1. And that was the hardest thing I've done. Oh you think it's easy? Hehe, <laughs> you're wrong. Because once you kill 8 enemies and the scoreboard shows 22, you'll know exactly what I mean. Anyway, I also did a game over screen. Since we're making a fully complete game, we need to add sound effects and music. And I hate that. Don't get me wrong, writing the sound manager class was the easiest thing I've done, even though I've never done it. The hardest part is finding the right sound that doesn't have strict copyright. But thanks to open game art, I found exactly what I needed. And now the game sounds amazing. The final day. Since I didn't have any time left, I started working on the menu. I drew the logo, the instructions, myself, a little self-promotion. Then I made a class for the buttons. The button has three states, when it's idle, when you hover on it, and when you press it. The game will have two buttons, a play button that starts the game, and a YouTube button that'll open my YouTube channel. I found out that in order to open a link in C++, you can use the shell command. When I finished working on the menu, I had 5 hours left. And I thought that was enough time to add power-ups. The first one increases the health of the robot. The second one makes the player shoot 3 bullets. And the third one kills all the enemies. The power-ups will generate randomly around the map. And here's how I'm killing the enemies. Don't judge me. I was also planning to add more enemies and a little story to the game. But since I only had 2 hours left, I said screw everything and submitted the game. The results. The game was downloaded 46 times. And one person bought the game for $2. I mean thanks, but why? Now when it comes to the jam itself, the game was rated by 4 people. And the game got… The 700th place. Yes! The saddest part about this is that the people decided the best thing about the game was the sound. And the sound was the only thing I didn't make myself. But honestly that was a great experience. I learned a lot from it. If you wanna play the game, you can download it on each.io. Now I wanna say thanks to Richie Spechner, Victor Fernandez, and other people who support me on Patreon. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and join our Discord server. And don't you dare 